in a world where carbs are your enemy, you need one man to help you fight your battles. That man is Jimmy. Combating nutrition, disinformation, and general bull. It's Jimmy Rants. JimmyRants.com. Carb pizza is what you want. You need to check realgoodfoods.com. Taste is amazing. Oh, yeah, it's the bomb. You need to check realgoodfoods.com. Free shipping online and in Kroger stores across the U.S. Realgoodfoods.com. Woo! What's up, what's up, you guys? Welcome back to another Instagram Live. And we're here with another episode of Jimmy Ranch. JimmyRants.com is the website. As always, you can engage live in the content, but you got to go follow me over on Instagram Live. I'm at Living Low Carb Man, L I V I N L O W C A R B M A N. Once you're there, you can engage live in the content, just like all these people coming in right now. Thanks for being here today on Jimmy Rants. If you missed the live, you can watch it on replay for up to 24 hours. After 24 hours, it does disappear. You'll need to pop on over to YouTube, type in a keyword, search Jimmy Rants. Also, youtube.com slash living low carb man. Finally, the best of the best moments of this here show, we make a podcast out of it. It's called the Jimmy Rance Podcast over on Apple Podcast as well as Stitcher. All of these links, you guys, are at jimmyrance.com. <clears throat> Today's Jimmy Rance is probably something a lot of you will be able to relate to. And I will, in full disclosure, being as open, honest, and vulnerable with you as possible, let you know that what I'm about to talk to you about today hit me this morning. So those of you that follow my work, you know I'm going away for six months, uh, starting September the 1st. Uh, Taking a sabbatical, been planning this for a very long time. It is coming up just mere weeks from now. I will be gone literally off of social media, writing books, doing podcasts, doing these Jimmy rants, totally gone. And so with that realization becoming more and more clear, uh, I'm having some emotional response that I've never had before. And I did a Jimmy rants previously when it happened the first time because it freaked me out. I'm like, what in the world is this going on? Uh, that I suddenly had this kind of empty, hollow, uh, sad kind of feeling. And so it hit me again today, guys. And I mean, it hit me upside the head so squarely that I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I can take this. Now, thankfully, I've got friends in my life that I could call uh, and my wife, Christine, who I could uh, talk to and got through it and was able to withstand it. But what I want to talk about here today with you guys is how do you resist temptation to emotional eating when it hits you hard? And I won't lie, I had major temptation to eat. Now, I have done keto for a very long time. I know when that emotional urge to want to eat pops up what it is, and I just resist it. Um, And I'm able to because I've done this for a very long time. But there's newbies to keto uh, who may not know how to handle that when it comes on. Is that you guys? Have you run into this where you have an emotional moment? Something happens in your life. You're thinking about things. uh, And when those things pop on, what's the first thing you want to go to? Think about it. You're not thinking about bacon. You're not thinking about ribeye steak. You're not even thinking about vegetables. You're thinking about the crappiest of crappy garbage that you possibly could put in your mouth. And of course, there's a physiological reason why your body craves such things when you go through emotional times that makes you want to emotionally eat. You want those carby foods because your body knows it needs a dopamine hit. And if you can get a dopamine hit that comes from the refined carbohydrates uh, and mostly sugars and grains that are in the foods that you're desiring. Think about every single food you would want to eat when you're emotionally eating. And so it's either grainy or sugary in some way, shape, form, or fashion. 
and your body knows inherently, okay, those things are going to make me feel better because you get a dopamine hit. You get a blood sugar rise. You get all of these kind of feel-good hormone actions taking place. And so if you get those hormones enabled, and of course we know insulin also goes up in that in that context, if you get all of those things activated, you start to feel better. So people are like, okay, when I need to feel better, I go to X foods, and it's usually some kind of crappy garbage. So how do you resist that? especially if you're brand new to keto. If you've only been keto within the last year, you may still struggle with this. You may still have those moments where, okay, how do I handle this? So for me this morning, I did not crave garbage. I've been off of that for so long. I think I've made that that switch over that I don't have the temptation to want to put that kind of food in my mouth. But it manifested itself in me in, oh, I want to eat something. So even even keto foods, I was deeply craving those. And some people would be like, okay, well, it's keto foods, it's no big deal. But I didn't want my emotional state to dictate when I eat. And I want to, I want you to hear this loud and clear because it would have been very tempting and very easy for me to just go binge on a bunch of keto foods. Would that have solved the problem? Would that have uh, made the emotional eating justified because it was quote unquote safe, because it was keto foods? I don't think so. And so I refused to allow that emotional situation that I was dealing with to overtake me. And I refused to allow it to get me in a habit of turning to food for comfort. You know, and we all do that. We've done it our whole lives. I think most of us that have been through things in our life, even before keto, especially before keto, you turn to food to give you comfort. And it's extremely easy to do that, guys. And so for me, I made a conscious decision, a conscious effort to not eat uh, anything when I was going through that. I ended up fasting uh, and by the time I did eat something, after I, I calmed down, I talked to a friend, talked to Christine, had some encouragement. After all of that calmed down, then I had a meal. And it had been 25 hours since my last meal. So it would have been when I would have eaten anyway. But I was not about to let the emotional state be there um, and force my hand to eat when I wasn't ready to eat. That makes sense? And so I want you to be empowered today that when those feelings come on, you are in control of how they impact you. Do they impact you and make you run towards food? Then that's something you need to work on. That's something that you have to recognize when it's happening. Okay, why am I suddenly craving you know, to eat a bunch of food even if it is keto food? And if you're having an emotional state at that time, then you recognize it and you say, okay, that's interesting. Um, Not going to give in to it. And for me, pushing the fast a little longer, it was very hard because you got all these kind of uh, deep, kind of empty feelings and and you kind of want to fill it up um, with food because your brain is telling you that. Go for the food. Um, And if you're kind of new to keto, maybe it says go for the crappy garbage. If you're an old timer in the keto space, even binging on keto food, none of those things would have been a good, good idea. And so dealing with it is tough. I won't deny. And if you joined us late, Jimmy Moore had a moment today uh, where it was very difficult um, that my body physiologically responded that I wanted to eat food. Um, because I was having an emotional response to just thinking about going away on the sabbatical. This is hard, guys, by the way. (laughs) I'm trying to work through all the emotional aspects of of going away for six months, and I'm not there yet. I'm still kind of working through those feelings, um, and I'm just being super-duper real with you today because this is real life. This is what you come to expect to hear from me, and I'm going to share it warts and all. And so I had a moment this morning where 
Uh, I was up early. That didn't help, number one. I was up around 3.45 this morning, and and then it just hit. It's just like, okay, why am I suddenly sad? Why am I suddenly feeling an empty feeling? Why do I suddenly want to eat food when I wasn't ready for uh, eating? Um, and it went on for hours, guys, that I was able to talk to a friend. That helped. I was able to talk to Christine, that helped. And once things did calm down, then I was able to have a meal and be in a good state. And here's another reason why you don't wanna eat in the midst of going through something like that. When your body is in a sympathetic state, which is a stressed state, which if you're going through emotional types of stuff, your body's under stress. And so if your body's under that kind of stress, don't be surprised if you eat food and it responds incredibly negatively in your body because that emotion is a negative uh, impact in your body and then you add food on top of that, your body can't properly digest the food even though temporarily you might feel better from having that. In the end, your body rejects it because it's like, whoa, 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 you gotta get in a more of a parasympathetic state, chilled out state. And for me this morning, guys, that was that was tough. I I struggled there for several hours, um, and thankfully was able to come out of that. And I wanted to come on here as soon as possible to talk to you guys about this because I know I am not alone. Now, not everybody's going away on a six month sabbatical, and you have something like that happening in your head where you know all these thoughts are popping in. But you do have circumstances in your life that drive you to be more stressed that would drive you to emotionally eat. We all do. And the difference between the people that resist those kinds of temptations based on emotional eating cues um, and the ones who give in are the ones who recognize what happens before it happens. So if you're watching this right now, whether you're watching on Instagram Live, whether you're listening to it on the Jimmy Rants podcast, you're watching on the replay on YouTube, wherever you are accessing this, I want you to know You've got to have a plan in place. You've got to be ready for when that hits so you don't give in. And it is possible. And I know because I just went through it a couple hours ago. Uh, I know how incredibly strong that pull is to make you want to eat and to feel like that's going to make you feel better. And I'm here to tell you, Maybe in the short term it might, but if you give in to those temptations and you continually give in to temptation, give in to temptation, give in to temptation, simply because your emotional state is not uh, in a good place, then you're setting a bad precedent. And you're setting a precedent, even if you binge on keto foods, you're still binging. Even if you have uh, a little something that you might be like, okay, well, this one little something crappy garbage isn't going to bother me and I'll feel better and I'll go right back on plan again. You want to bet? I have seen many people go down that slippery slope where they say, well, I'll have uh, a cookie this one time and they get the cookie and it makes them feel good. Here's what you're doing. You are in training your body that whenever you feel an emotional stress and an emotional state, that the best way to feel better is to simply give in to the temptation. And I think that is the exact wrong thing to do. So what I did was I continued fasting, even though every inkling in my body wanted something to eat, even though I never had a hunger signal, it was all right here. It was all, dude, get the dopamine hit, however you have to. And I resisted because I knew what was going on. So plan now, those moments are gonna happen. And when those moments happen, you're ready. You know what's going on. You're conscientious, conscientious, even in the midst of the pain, even in the midst of going through that. Um, and I do hope that this is an encouragement to you today that, yes, even Jimmy Moore deals with these kinds of uh, issues. Um, it's real. And if you don't acknowledge that this happens, then you're never going to be able to know how to handle it when it does happen. 
And as I was telling my friend today, this is so unchartered territory for me because I've always had a pretty level head about me. I've always been able to rationalize and think through things pretty easily. And it's this realization that this, um, that this sabbatical is coming up very quickly that has just brought out this flood of emotion in me. And I, I suppose it's good practice because once I'm gone, gone, <laughs> For six months and it's like literally quiet. I'm not reading social media. I'm not interacting with people as much anymore. I think it's going to be harder. So maybe this is preparing me now for when I do go away to be able to have that strategy in play. Just wanted to encourage you guys with this here today. So welcome in, welcome in. Thanks for being here today on Jimmy Rants. And yeah, there's no way two hours ago I would have been able to do a Jimmy Rants. I was not in the right state of mind. I was really down. I I wasn't in a good place. And thanks to uh, friends and Christine, I was able to um, get past it and feel better. So um, that's good. Uh, my cousin Robbie says, yeah, that's me if I'm honest. Yeah, I want you to be honest. And I think that's fair, Robbie. I think more people go through this kind of stuff and they suffer in silence and they don't talk about it and they don't think about it. And they think, okay, well, I'll just hide uh, going to eat a a bag of chips. I'll just hide having those donuts and nobody will know. Well, you'll know. And then you'll start getting guilty from that. Then that puts you in a deeper emotional state. And it's just round and round and round. And it's better to come up with a plan strategy here now when you're consciously thinking about this and maybe not in in that state right this very second. You will be. And so have that plan and strategy in place now. Bree says, this is me, pizza, Ben and Jerry's, it's rough. Yeah. See, you just named crappy garbage that are grainy and sugary. That's what our brain wants. We're looking for that dopamine hit. If you can get the dopamine hit, you feel better. What they don't tell you about dopamine is you get the big, quick hit and you feel better for a time. And then (laughs) blood sugar crash and you feel bad again. So that's no bueno. Anna says, ice cream would be my emotional garbage. I've only given in once, but I know how crappy I feel afterwards. Felt great while I was eating it though. Yeah, you will feel great in the midst of it. Like I said, you're getting the dopamine hit, but it's that crash that happens after the dopamine hit that makes it far worse and not better. MMA says, I understand I don't uh, eat to feel good, but rather not to feel bad. Yeah, and that's a good perspective. Um, And if you're feeling bad, I think that's the worst possible time to be eating anything at all, which is why in the midst of my emotional experience this morning that I was going through, I recognized what was going on and I chose not to eat. It was the exact right Uh, solution for me because in that sympathetic state, I was not in a position to digest food well, was not in a position to really do anything good with that food I would put in my body. Even if it was keto-friendly foods, it would not have been a good thing. I had to basically get beyond those feelings uh, through talking it out with uh, some friends and with Christine and got beyond it, got more in a parasympathetic state so that then I could eat some food and the food would be digested well and be used in a positive way for my body. Uh, Carnivorous Lioness says, it's okay to cry. I cry when I need to. It helps me. It might help uh, the rest of you. Yeah, I'm not afraid to cry. Um, If you watched my low-carb cruise lecture uh, from this year, then you know I'm not afraid to cry. (laughs) Um, I couldn't stop crying during that talk. Um, And I'm sure as the sabbatical gets closer, I'm going to have more and more of those moments. Um, So I'm not afraid to cry. I'm definitely not holding in the emotion. Um, But I do think it's important. Uh, Crying would be maybe a way to stave off wanting to have that food if it makes you feel better. Um, It's just, it's the weirdest feeling. You get this kind of sudden, out of nowhere, just feeling of emptiness and sadness. And I've never experienced this in my life. It's the weirdest sensation. I know there's other people that you get these things all the time and and it's normal for you. But for somebody like me, I've never experienced this kind of emotional distress before. Um, 
And it could be that I've just gone so hard for so long that I don't know what that's supposed to feel like. So now that I'm slowing down, I'm getting to see what it feels like. So <laughs> it's not fun, I'll tell you that. Um, food never makes the feelings go away anyway. They come back stronger if you stuff with food, yes. And your body can't do anything with that food, not anything good. Um, if your body can't digest it well because you have it under stress from the emotional distress that you have, your body can't do good things with that food. So um, not eating is probably the best strategy. Beth says, it's very tough. I struggle with emotional eating leading to a binge, mostly keto, but more than I care to admit, crappy garbage. It's hard to turn the thought off. It is hard. And Beth, I empathize with you now. Um, I couldn't, uh, before a couple months ago when all this started welling up, I couldn't empathize with that because I didn't understand that. Now I get it. Um, but thankfully, I've done this long enough. I have no desire in my heart to eat crappy garbage. I would have the propensity to binge on keto food pretty easily. Uh, but even that today, I recognized what was going on and was able to stop myself before that happened. Carnivorous says, I was super upset the other day. My husband dragged me to the gym but I, and I felt better afterwards. Yeah, exercise could definitely help. I tried so many little strategies of trying to take my mind off of it. I just dug my he head into my work this morning and pumped out several posts while I was having all those feelings and it didn't let up. So find something. I probably should have went in my infrared sauna uh, or did some kind of other self-care that might have made it go away a little bit quicker than it did. Tracy says, we'll still be here, Jimmy, when you're ready to come back. Well, thank you, Tracy. I I don't know what's bringing on the emotion. I don't know if it's leaving you guys, if it's me leaving the work because I've so put my identity in all the work that I've done. So you take away the work. Who am I, right? Um, yeah, I don't, yeah, it's, it, there's so much I'm processing in my head right now. It's hard to really articulate all that's going on. MMA, running from lions, uh, stress shuts down digestion, reproductive system, and your immune system. That's right. It does. I bet you come back after and say you loved your sabbatical. Oh, I have no doubt, uh, carnivorous, that I'm going to love the sabbatical. That's not the point here. The point is getting into it. And I don't think anybody who's ever gone, you know, hard like I have for as long as I have, and then you suddenly go away, I think you would be, you wouldn't be human if you didn't have some emotion attached to leaving for a period of time. Um, and no, I have no doubt I'm going to enjoy it. It might take a bit before I get to the part where I enjoy it, but I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to uh, work on me. My full-time job will be whatever it takes to get my body healed. Already starting to see some of that happen even now, even before I leave, just from slowing down. Um, and so I know when I come back, it will have been all worth it, especially all the things I'll be doing physically uh, in the gym. I'm going to do emotionally, uh, talking to a therapist, um, and just doing the things that I know to help heal the body, working with a functional medicine doctor who's going to keep an eye on various things. He's got me doing these. Uh, you might have seen my post on my stories from last night, uh, taking some peptides, which I'll tell you more about here soon. But really, really good stuff. But I got to get there. And the journey getting there uh, is a whole lot harder than I was expecting it to be. Beth says, even if keeping it keto, that first bite is enough to perpetuate it and it does uh, not make me feel good because I know I fell in a weak moment. Well, you can definitely beat yourself up over what you should have done and what you did do. Um, but hopefully today's Jimmy Rants is encouraging you and, and Beth does say it's encouraging. Uh, I take no solace that others suffer through this mental hell. Yeah, it's it's tough. And again, this is uncharted territory for me. I was telling my friend this today uh, that I was talking to about this. I have never dealt with this in my life. This is all brand 
spanking new. And so I know there's people that deal with this a lot like you, Beth, um, on the regular. For me, this is new feelings, new territory um, that does make me empathize for people like yourself. That's for sure. Um, if you had no emotional support, uh, would your uh, what would your response be? Well, that's the key, Beth. I know I have emotional support. I surround myself with people that are my tribe people that I trust and love and care about and respect uh, and look to to be there for me, challenge me. Um, and that includes Christine as well. And so I share with her, I share with friends and, the, and through it all, you get through that. If you don't have that emotional support system in place, I highly encourage you find it. Get those people in your life because it's going to help you so very much. And then you're there for them when they go through stuff. That's the way it's supposed to work. Nobody is supposed to go through this world all alone. And so find those people that you love and trust. Uh, Shinobi said, I asked this question yesterday, but I left the live. Oh, you're asking a general question, sweetie. We don't answer those on Jimmy Rants when we're on the specific topic. And today we're talking about how to resist temptation to emotional eating when it hits you hard. So if you want tips on breaking a fast, go back and watch the videos I did all about fasting at jimmyrants.com. I did answer your question. Uh, so go back and watch the replay if you missed it. Beth says, my tribe lives hours away. Every one of them, uh, an in-person human would be great. Well, an in-person human would be great, but sometimes that phone call, which is what the friend gave me today, um, the phone call is good. So don't discount just because they're hours away that you can't get benefit out of talking to someone on the phone. If you both have iPhones, you could FaceTime. So that's like a virtual um, meetup in person. So don't discount that. This friend today helped me so much. And then I talked to Christine when she was awake. And between those two points of action and support, I was able to get beyond it. Um, so don't psych yourself out that you're, well, I can't see them in person and I need to. It's not always practical. Brittany says, you are describing things I went through in March. I was in weight loss mode for so long that when I didn't have it, I thought I didn't know who I was anymore, slowly finding that now. And I remember that, Brittany, when you went through that and your identity was in the weight loss and then you took that away what are you then? So you've become this this awesomeness that you are now uh, because you made that switch. So I'm probably going to discover so many things about who I am that I don't express in my day-to-dayism of the work that when I remove the podcasting and I remove the Jimmy Rants and remove active being active on social media and remove the writing of books for that six-month period of time, I'm going to discover who I am and it's, it's going to be an interesting journey because I don't know who that guy is yet. Apart from those things that I just described, I would hope that I know bits and pieces of it. And I think I do, but who is that guy without all of that stuff? We're going to find out. Um, all right. I am making it a wonderful position to just go ahead and delete people that ask stupid stuff. So Alan just got the boot for saying something really stupid. And that's something I'm going to work on when I'm gone too, by the way. I'm not going to put up with people emotionally beating me up. And that person just did. Bye-bye, Alan. Thank you for playing. Have a nice day. All right, guys, so the bottom line in this Jimmy Rants, how do you resist temptation to emotional eating when it hits you hard? Because it will. It did me today. And if it did me today and I was able to withstand, thanks to emotional support from um, uh, a great friend of mine and from my wife, Christine, and just getting beyond it, um, you can do it. You can get past it. And it's not this inevitability that should drive you to eating crappy garbage. It's not an inevitability that you binge on eating 
and binge eating um, even keto foods. Don't let the fact that the food is keto give you permission to eat a bunch of it and think it's okay. It's not okay. If you have to eat your feelings, then deal with the feelings first before you eat. That's it for this episode of Jimmy Rants. JimmyRants.com is the website. As always, you can tune in live. We do this live here on Instagram Live. I'm at Livin' Low Carb Man, L I V I N L O W C A R B M A N. Once you're there, you can engage live just like all these people did here today. Thank you guys for being here today. If you missed the live, you can watch it on replay for up to 24 hours. After 24 hours, poof, it disappears. You'll need to pop on over to YouTube, type in a keyword search, Jimmy Rants. You will find the show. Also, youtube.com slash living low carb man. And then finally, we have a podcast. Who knew? Uh, <laughs> it's called Jimmy Rants over on Apple Podcasts as well as Stitcher. All of these links, you guys, are at jimmyrants.com. And yes, this was a little bit different, Jimmy Rants, but I try to keep it real. I think you expect that of me at this point. And I will continue sharing things that I learn along the way of this journey of going away on the sabbatical all the way till August 31st. You're going to hear from me if things happen. I'm going to share it with you because I think it benefits all of us in the end if we articulate these kind of things. So I'll keep doing that for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, we'll see you then.